Assalamu alaikum, Amin here. I wrote that book over there about Islamic masculinity, how you should act as a Muslim man. Now, I was on the Optimized Muslim podcast, and I wanted to share this very important clip from that podcast with you. It's where I talk about red pill, what us Muslim men should take from it, and what we should throw in the bin. Check it out. This is very important for you to know. Okay, so what can we agree with them? We can agree that men are different to women. Men have different roles than women. Um, we can also agree that women think differently to men and uh, the way you communicate with women should be different and you need to um, change your approach when you're talking to a woman, when you're dealing with a woman, when you're trying to whatever convince a woman of something is different when you're dealing with a man. Um, they, of course, they apply that more to, to like how to pick up women and stuff like that a lot of the time. But, you know, the same basic principle would apply with your wife, with your potential spouse, with your sister with the, someone you're volunteering in the same group as or whatever um in terms of yeah men and women are different they think differently um they have this whole concept of you know the what's it sexual market value and all that mm. i think there that's probably an area we would disagree strongly with them on which is like there's this there's a there's a market out there for like mating or marriage or dating or whatever they talk about and it's like with Muslims, it kind of doesn't always apply. It partially applies, but it doesn't always apply. So they are obsessed with, you know, it, it's like very fits perfectly, almost too perfectly into this very hedonistic, materialistic worldview, um, or almost atheistic worldview, where it's like the purpose of life for a man is to accumulate the most wealth, the most women, um, and the most like status as possible. Status amongst people, of course. And you know, if that's the starting point for them, for how they think about um, dating or marriage or relationships, then I think, you know, you can see how we're going to go. We're going to depart from the way they think very quickly because, okay, so for us, um, women, I mean, women is, women is like a significant part of life for a man, right? Um, some, a lot of men, they, they just can't get on with life until they just sorted that part of their life out. You know, they got married and stuff. So that's fair enough. But we don't make our goal women or to accumulate the most women that we've even married, never mind like dated and all that, right? Um, for us, like, like Allah says, it's like a woman, a wife, you know, it could be a, a, a mata'a, like it's a, it's a useful thing in the dunya, it's something good in the dunya, something even to enjoy in the dunya, but it also could be a distraction. So, you know, we don't make it our number one goal in life, but it, it could be a great thing uh, uh, to have a family, to have kids, to be the leader of, of that group of, of people. Um, but we, we just don't make it like the main thing. And really we, we, Yanni, what are we really going around looking at our friends or other people and be like, yeah, that guy's, that guy's sick. He's got four wives versus one wife. Like, re does it really make you like better? Like objectively? No, uh, we can't really say that. Then we get onto money. So this is a, probably the number one thing after women that they focus on. And again, we know uh, money risk is qadr from Allah that Allah gives you. And you could implement the best strategies and you'll still make whatever Allah wrote for you. Um, although you do have to strive because that's what's expected of you. You have to implement, you have to work the best way that you know to work. Okay, re if I want to make, for a good reason, I want to make 50K a month, I need to reasonably do the work that would get me that, okay? But then whether that happens or not, that's in the in the hands of Allah. So with money, we can't associate um, your value in the eyes of Allah or in the eyes of people, really, with uh, having a lot of money because, you know, you could tr do everything it takes and still not get money. Um, we just, we need money to live. We need money to achieve some good things. So we just do whatever's reasonable, but it doesn't define your value, right? Because especially the number one reason is the Prophet ﷺ was not a wealthy person, yeah? The Prophet ﷺ, he rejected having lots of wealth. Yeah, he had the chance to have it, he didn't. And we have uh, companions who were very wealthy and those were, were not wealthy and they both have the highest status. So that, that tells you very clearly that in a Muslim's worldview, being rich is not like something that would elevate your status per se. What will elevate your status is if Allah gives you money, how you spend it. And if Allah doesn't give you money, how you react to that, right? And also how you spend the little money you do have, right? So that's like the money element. It's not the number one goal for us. It can be helpful, but it's not like the num number one goal. The third element, <coughs> um, 
what did I say? Uh, oh, status. Status, again, what the, the, you know, the red pill movement, they focus on status amongst other men and amongst women. You know, you've got to be that man that every woman wants and every woman is attracted to. And she's just like begging for you to like give her some attention. And amongst men, you've got to be that guy, you know, you've got that, um, you know, that body, you've got that car, you've got that watch. And, uh, therefore they're going to respect you and look up to you and all of that. And, you know, um, status amongst people is, we know it's not important versus status with Allah, right? That's what we focus on as Muslims. And so, you know, even I was just looking at hadith the other day and there's that hadith of the two wolves. I don't want to misquote it, but it's basically there is nothing, uh, uh, uh two wolves on, uh, uh, like attacking a herd of sheep is more dangerous for a man's deen than uh, wealth and a, a passion for wealth and, and status and high status. You know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing there, but seeking status and fame is a big, big problem. It's a big, big problem. Um, and so how can we seek status in the way that these guys kind of promote? And so with all of these three things, there's some element, there's some truth to it in terms of how we would apply it. <coughs> Sorry, but the way that they chase it as their number one, like these three things I mentioned, I think is a good summary of like their whole thing is improve yourself to get the most of these three things. Mm. Now, what do I say? I'm like, I don't even want those three things as a biggest, highest goal, you know? See, I could really break down Thinking about my past now Holding on to these rope tied I've read these scripts gonna last